Reverend James Lyles grew up on the streets of Harrisburg amid drugs and crime and violence. And in 1989, God changed his heart and led him to reach out to youth and try and prevent them from going down the road, wrong road. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me, Brittany. How did you start into wanting to work with youth ministries and, and youth prevention from drugs and alcohol? I really didn't at first. I didn't know what I was doing um, working with kids because I really didn't like kids. But, you know, God got a sense of humor and he just used me in a way and said, listen, you've been through all this and you can help. Everybody was wondering how to work with kids back then and said, well, you know, maybe you can do it and through your life and you, how you grew up and everything. So that's how I got into it. And you have sewing classes and chess club and um, you have choirs. How did you decide which programs that you wanted to use to really connect with the youth? I just, I saw that it was simple things that people weren't doing anymore. Like when you, go, you used to go to school, you used to go and have sewing class, typing class, things of that matter. So that's the type of things that I started out with. You know, the earth is there, you don't have to pay for it. And when I did buy it anyway from the city, it was like $2 for two lots, which is two houses worth of uh, footage. And just asking around for plants and, and bricks and things like that. And the kids came out and, and did that. And then when I started it, I actually paid the kids $2. Okay. An hour. And you were building a memorial garden right. for, for, for the, people that were killed in the area? Right. Well, really in the whole county, there's okay. um, violence uh, throughout the county. And what we wanted to do was have a place, because I noticed that a lot of them didn't have uh, uh, stones. Mm. They're tombstones. And they didn't have, some of them are buried a long way because they get donated uh, lots. So I wanted to have a place where they could come and, and memorialize their, their loved ones right here in the city. And it was through that garden that you actually got linked with the United Methodist Church, right? Right, because they're right next door. Okay, and they ended up helping and sending some kids to some of the um, revivals or camp meetings that right. you had. Um, did you see, was there an integration between the kids that, that were working with you at the YMCA as well as the kids that were going to this church that were also going to the camp? Did yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, they like getting together. <laughs> Yeah, they look for one another, like they say, are they coming, or so-and-so coming? When we do have events, we just had a skating party like last week, and we had a collaboration between the four churches, what would be um, Wesley, uh, Deary Street, Rockville, and Camp Curtin, and we invited the Stilt Mennonite Church and the Baptist Church that's located on the Deary Street site. So we had all those churches together with their kids, and we ended up with about 60 people to come there instead of the other kids that were going out um, trick-or-treating for Halloween. Okay. You have a unique position that not only do you work with the United Methodist Church, but you also work with drug and alcohol prevention, and it's more of a collaborative youth ministry. Can you tell me how that worked out? Well, how it worked out was I had already been doing some work with the United Methodist Church through a couple of their churches, and my contract was ending anyway with drug and alcohol with the YMCA. So, and when the Susquehanna Conference got received the, uh, the new contract, they invited me to come over and work with them and then actually kind of do some of the same programs, but using ministry. Now, when you work uh, in other places, you're doing programs, but the, the county didn't have a problem. Uh, I'm talking about like the county commissioners that we had talked to didn't have a problem with ministry be involved in with the program. In the past, churches have been doing this for thousands of years and it has been working. Lately, you know, state has taken over and started doing programs and it's, they just wanted to collaborate to make it better. So that's what we're doing. All right. And you mentioned that you think that chess really relates to the kids' lives. Can you explain a little bit about that? Well, 
this is how I see it is that the you know the game is already being played and people don't see it as a game but in the streets they do call it game mm -hmm. and they say something like this they'll say game recognize game so what that means is that if they notice somebody that's uh, been in the world that's called game and then what they're trying to do is game so they recognize somebody that comes to the board with game so when I, when I talk about that, um, they have to be in this process of playing chess. I want them to know how life is. And life comes at you not just instantly, but there's moves down the road. And when they play this game, they don't learn about just the, the initial move. They learn about two moves ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's how I want them thinking in, the, in this game. You know, you don't want to walk into a room and get fired. You should already know that today might be your last day. So, or what you can do to change it so you don't get fired. I think it's neat that you said that um, you really want the kids to become acquainted with the church and so the programs are held in the church building and then some of the people from the church come and it's not necessarily a devotion time but it's just a way for them to connect with the kids and hopefully just, uh, just draw them into the love and support of the church family. All right. Now, the, like the one program we, we're doing now is the, the Unity, the Youth uh, Choir. So if the kids come in from sewing, but they like to sing or really can sing, but we blend them in, now they're, they're giving a glory to God through their voice, mm. not even knowing it, mm. because it's just another program to them, some of them. But some of them are singers, and they, they do want to sing to the Lord. But that's another way for them to get into the church. You also said that you have free, just fun events um, that you invite the kids along on, but you try and get them connected with the program first right. before you take them along. Right. I don't. I don't. Right now, we're not taking any kids that's not participating in our programs, and we're, we're like I said, we have Teen Center at Rockville, so they have a list of kids that be coming there to do that. Kids that sign up for the chess club, kids that want to be in the the choir. Uh, the Garden Club. Now, those are the kids that we're going to reward and take them on trips. What do you think is a word of wisdom that you can share with people that want to do urban ministries and want to get the kids involved in coming into their church? Well, uh, what I like to share is because there's a lot of programs out there. There's a lot of things going on, and a lot of people do things for certain reasons. Even if somebody was quitting smoking, and they say, well, I'm quitting smoking because of my mom. You know, only what you do for Christ is going to last. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to show, that you did everything else other ways. There's other um, organizations that do similar things that we do, but only what you do for Christ is going to last. Okay. Well, I thank you for um, just your change of heart and for um, going out on faith and really working with kids, even though you didn't necessarily really love kids in the beginning, yeah. but that you that God could could use you to help them and to really just bring them into his family and his church. So thank you. Thank you for having me. So if you would like to learn more about his ministries, you can check out my Facebook or my blog at sesquahannaexpress.blogspot.com.